Stay tuned for the latest message excerpt from josephprince.com. Say grace. grace. Say favor. favor. It's, it's the same. Grace and favor is the same. You look at the Amplified, it brings, every time it says grace in the New Testament, in the bracket, unmerited favor. Favor you don't deserve. Now today you must be careful. There are people trying to redefine grace. We cannot redefine what is established. We, we have no right to remove the ancient landmarks. And you don't take my word for it. Take Romans 11 verse 6 for the definition of grace. Grace is not, all right? Grace is not uh, uh, something that God gives you that, if you don't, you know, if you, let me put it this way. Grace is not an empowerment. Grace produces empowerment. Today, there's a redefinition saying grace is an empowerment. And, 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 and whoever started this heard me preach in a conference where I said the woman caught in, the, uh, uh, in adultery, Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Jesus first gave her the gift of no condemnation. And the gift of no condemnation must come first. The church says, go and sin no more, then we won't condemn you. Jesus says, I don't condemn you. Now go and sin no more. So the gift of no condemnation empowered her to go and sin no more. Years ago, I've been preaching that. So somebody got that and twist the whole thing around and said, grace is an empowerment. It is not. Grace produces empowerment. Unmerited favor produces empowerment. Amen. But grace is not empowerment. Let Romans 11 verse 6 say very clearly, all right? It says that, for if it's by grace, then it's no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. Now, if it is of works, then it's no more grace. Otherwise, works is no more works. So you see that both grace and works are antithesis. Amen. 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 So grace is unearned, undeserved, unmerited favor. Work is all deserved, merit, deserving, okay? It's all human effort. So back to this. I'm giving you a picture right now because you need to understand that Joseph had favor from God. If it just depends on his good looks, because the Bible says Joseph is handsome. And I'll tell you a reason. The later on, it tells you that he's handsome, okay? But it doesn't tell you he's handsome now. Why? Because God wants you to know that it's not his handsomeness or your prettiness that gets you the job, that gets you the open door, that gets you the, 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 the success that you want. God wants you to know that it's his favor, so a lot of us, we are still depending on the flesh. We are depending on things that is actually obstructing favor. So God doesn't bring the fact that he's handsome here. He brings it later at a point that we understand. So he says here, Joseph found favor. So favor is unearned, undeserved. And, and he served Potiphar. Then Potiphar made Joseph overseer of his house. And all that he had, he put under his authority. Look at verse 5. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. I have no doubt, many of you, your company is blessed because you are there. Amen. Your organization is blessed because you are there. Amen. I have no doubt, this nation is blessed because we are here. Amen. Amen. We are not to be a, 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 you know, a, a, a pain or a bane to our nation, complaining, complaining all the time. Let's be a blessing. Amen. Amen. We are called to bless. Amen. And the, 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 the one that is getting the benefit is an Egyptian. So forget about this. You know, only God will only bless uh, 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 Christians. Let me tell you this. Because of the uh, believers, God will bless whoever you are associated with. That's why God doesn't want you to anyhow just get into an, uh, a, a, a relationship or a, con, uh, a contract with, with an unbeliever where you have to compromise your, your moral integrity and all that and do things this way. Amen? Why? He's getting your blessing, but you're getting all his bad things. Not a good deal. Not a good deal. Amen? But they will be blessed. They will be blessed because of you. All right, so God bless everything in Egyptian's house. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Um, that's really letting go. Then it tells you now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. Okay, why? Because of the next verse. The next verse says, Thus he left, uh, his, it came to pass after these things, his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph and she said, lie with me. Now this is not tell lies with me. Okay? So let me just tell you this. A lot of, a lot of people have this idea. If, if the Lord prospers me, why do, why do I get into trouble? Because he's about to get into trouble. Now, he didn't sleep with her. Okay, listen carefully. 
In fact, he resisted her advances. Joseph actually said in Hebrew, how can I commit? All right, gadol ra. Gadol is kohen gadol, like high priest, big priest, high priest. Gadol, big. Gadol is big. All right, ra is evil. How can I commit this big evil? Adultery in the eyes of Joseph was great evil. Amen, Pastor Prince. And, and this was before the Ten Commandments was given. Moses is not even an idea at that time. Joseph lived long before the Ten Commandments. And he called adultery great evil. But Pastor Prince, I believe sin is sin. Listen, friend. Jesus categorized sins. He told Pontius Pilate, the one who delivered me to you has the greatest sin. So there are measures of sin. Now, one sin is enough to send anyone to hell. But there are different categories of sin. Amen. If a guy is bad-tempered, a leader is bad-tempered, he will not be, he will be told, he might be, you know, uh, 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 confronted with, but usually he will not lose his position. But if a leader commits adultery, it's a different thing. No one can come and say, this is a, uh, sin is sin. No, there are categories. Amen. I don't expect an amen. I'm saying amen for myself. Praise God. I'm preaching it, man. Praise the Lord. So you need to know that. The good news is coming. Don't worry. So I'm just saying that Joseph had a sense of divine favor, so he could say no. He was far from his family. Nobody would know. In fact, sleeping with the boss's wife would put him in, 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 in good uh, favor with her. She can open doors for him. Amen. She already opened one door, eh? <laughs> The physical door. So the thing is this, you know, I mean, he, he'll be in good standing, isn't it? So there are ways that you can actually do things that will put you in good standing with your business partners and things like that. Or are you depending on the favor of God? Are you willing not to compromise, stand up for moral excellence that will glorify Christ and do things right? Expect God's favor to make up for the difference. Amen. Then you can say, you, you, you know, you, you are like Joseph. Amen. But if you are compromising, you are cheating, you are conniving, you are, you, are, you are not telling the truth all the time, and then you prosper, then you say it's God's favor. It's not God's favor. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now you must understand, God's vision for you is you be like Joseph. That's God's vision for you. But God doesn't want you depending on your flesh, on your works, on your effort. Can I have a good Amen. So his problems were about to start, not because he yielded to temptation, because he rejected temptation. So some people have this idea, if God favors me and I do what's right, how come I get into trouble? The next thing you know is that the wife in hell has no fury like a woman scorn. Amen. Joseph Prince chapter 1 verse 2. No, <laughs> it's not original with me. It is actually William Shakespeare. It's not in the Bible, by the way. Amen. Hell has no fury like a woman scorn. I'm sure the Chinese have their own version. It's like guys don't dare tell their wife directly, so they speak in parables. <laughs> For example, they don't tell their wives, you know, um, they just tell their wife, it's not, it's not that I, I, I hate your relatives, it's just that, that I love your mother-in-law more than mine. <laughs> hey, you're a bit slow this morning, never mind. All right, okay. Yeah, one guy said that to his wife, he never saw her again for three months. <laughs> the beginning of the fourth month, he saw her a little bit from the corner of his eye. <laughs> okay, never mind. Okay, it came to pass after these things. All right? So, it came to pass after these things. The Lord prospered him. A lot of people say, Pastor, I confess I'm the righteous of God in Christ. And now, next thing I know, I get into trouble. Well, the trouble is designed by God as a stepping stone. Because he's about to end up in prison. Ah, uh -huh. that's a stepping stone. Amen. And he's about to interpret the dreams of the king's butler, who later on will tell the king about him. And because of his testimony, Joseph will not just be brought out of prison, but out of Potiphar's house to stand in the presence of the most powerful monarch during that time. So you think about it, all, you know, people say, I confess I'm the righteousness of God in Christ and I get into trouble. Why this trouble? Hey, it is still the favor of God. 
One thing about the trouble is that it's like the ship in the ocean, okay? As long as the water don't get into the ship, no problem. You are in the midst of the trial. But God will not allow the trial to get into you. You will thrive in the midst of the trial. So, so drop this idea that when God prospers everything you touch, there's no trouble. There will be trouble. But the trouble is like, you know, it's like a stepping stones. It's like the devil throw you all kinds of stone and you are in a, in a hole. You got nowhere to go out. He throw you stones and all that. Amen. And the stone never hit you. But you built from that stone, you built a ladder. You built a stepping stone literally all the way out. Amen. The devil throws lemons, you make lemonade. Amen. It's, it's the kind of thing when favor is on you. That even the bad things turn for good. Because if the brothers never were jealous of him, they never would have sold him off. If they didn't sell him off, he wouldn't end up in Egypt. If he didn't end up in Egypt, he wouldn't be in Potiphar's house, where Potiphar's wife saw him. If it's not for Potiphar's wife who lied about him, he would not be thrown into prison. If he wasn't in prison, he won't be in position, in place to interpret the dream of the king's butler. If he never interpreted the dream, he will still be there. But one thing led to another, and next thing you know, he became the most powerful man, able and empowered to save his family and many others.